finite element analysis. But where to start? Is there some sort of a seance? Is there chanting? Do demons spring from the computer and deliver the answer to you? Maybe it gets pulled up in a FedEx truck. <laughs> no, none of the above. Today, we review the basics of the FEA process. Now, knowledge of this process allows you to negotiate with reasonable expectations and to understand the limitations of your service provider. Altogether, it guarantees that you will be happy with the product at the end. So take a look at this diagram on your screen. This shows the general work sequence for an FEA analyst. We start with setup of the FEA problem, geometry, understanding the problem. Then we move into mesh generation. Mesh generation forms the majority of the project work. There's going to be a lot of iteration in here. We generate a mesh, we check a few settings, check the quality and the controls of that, then we regenerate the mesh and iterate around and around in this. Eventually, after the engineer is happy with the mesh quality, they perform some additional QA to make sure that the answers all look reasonable and match reality. And then finally, we generate the results and wrap everything into one single tidy report. So let's go into some of the details for this process. The geometry is where it all starts. The engineer will need to build an accurate 3D model for the FEA analysis. You're going to want to supply all the geometry that you can to the engineer. This includes drawings, 3D models, any information you can about the section that you need FEA analysis for. So if you want to install new equipment, the engineer also needs to know the details about that equipment and the structural de details of the ship at the installation location. The engineer will likely need to take all of that information and build a new 3D model specific to the FEA, even if you supply a 3D model as a starting point. This is for three main reasons. First off, software programs are often not compatible with each other, so the FEA software may not be able to read your 3D model file. Second, the FEA programs usually have a higher requ quality requirement for 3D models. Something that looks like a closed model to you as a human, the FEA computer might see that it's not perfectly defined mathematically, and that's a problem. And then the third reason is that the FEA engineer usually simplifies the 3D model. They eliminate extraneous details to ensure that you have the most efficient FEA computation possible. The engineer has now created the 3D model and they have imported it into their FEA program. Next, the engineer is going to constrain the model, specifying sections where the structure cannot move. We are going to use those constraints to define the conditions at the edges of the FEA model. After constraints, the loads specify all the actions that are happening to the model. Things like a crane load, um, acceleration due to gravity, acceleration due to sea keeping, any number of things that could be adding in to loading the structure and stressing the steel. Remember that in most analysis, you will need more than one load case. Normally, the engineer needs to check several different load combinations. The mesh is what drives the magic of FEA. You're going to take a big, complicated ship and break it into many tiny little pieces. The engineer is going to really focus on efficiency at this point. They're going to try to minimize the cell count in the mesh by focusing small cells only where required. You see, more cells means more computing time and higher computing budgets. And you shouldn't expect that there's going to be just one mesh. You should expect that the engineer is going to generate multiple meshes. Getting the right mesh is partly a process of trial and error. See, multiple meshes are also required as part of the quality control pro process to do a mesh convergence study. So one question that I get asked a lot is how big is a large FEA analysis? Well, that depends a lot on the scenario and the physics that you're trying to solve for. But to give some overly generalized examples, by current computing standards in 2018, I would say 30,000 to 100,000 cells makes a medium analysis that can run on a decent desktop computer. 1 million to 3 million cells now you're talking a bigger FEA model that's going to require some extended computing time, but you might still be able to run that on a decent desktop computer. Once we start talking 3 million cells and up, that's where you're really starting to mean larger FEA models, where the computing time will probably be its own item in the budget. Mesh convergence studies. This is an essential step for quality control of an FEA simulation. 
See, the haunting question that gets asked for any FEA mesh, what is the right size for that mesh? Is it too big, too small? Now, we all have guidelines, but nobody can predict the exact size of cell required for each FEA analysis. True certainty, the kind of thing that you can really guarantee, well, that's going to require the engineer to run a mesh convergence study, sometimes also called a mesh independent study. The mesh convergence study is a major part of the quality control for an FEA simulation. I don't want to go into too much detail of what it entails, because it's a subject in its own right. But for now, let's just say that if you're reviewing an FEA analysis, you should expect to see this somewhere as part of the quality control process. One other thing that's going to happen as part of the FEA analysis, somewhere along the way, the engineer is probably going to compare the FEA analysis results to some type of simplified analysis using classic structural mechanics. This probably won't be part of your final report. It's an integrated part of the quality control process, a sensibility check to ensure that the FEA is producing reasonable results. The model works! Yes! Now to the exciting part, to create the actual requested outputs that are part of the contract. Now this takes a surprising amount of time. Normally we're looking at graphs, pictures, and one or two numerical results. The pictures are the part that take the most time. You gotta remember these pictures are going into a report, which is 2D pictures printed on paper. It takes a lot of 2D pictures to show every detail of a 3D model. Typically, the engineer is going to provide some overview pictures, and then they're going to focus on a few details of interest in the model, highlighting all the important elements that you should know about. That can add up to a lot of outputs and a lot of pictures. One alternative that you might consider to save yourself budget is to request a 3D file uh, with a free viewer. Some of the FEA softwares have this, some don't, but it is a 3D viewer that includes just the FEA results, not the actual model settings, and it doesn't allow you to change anything, but it does allow you to view the results in 3D with all the same levels of detail that the engineer can. Time to wrap it up into a report. The engineer should summarize all their analysis work and results in a report. An FEA report has a few additional requirements beyond standard engineering reports. See, the FEA report needs to demonstrate reasons for confidence in the model. Clients sometimes want a copy of the FEA model. Now, this is the equivalent of asking your doctor if you can perform your own x-rays. Engineers tend to resist giving up the model because that model also contains all of their proprietary settings. Plus, you would need the same FEA software to even open the file. But they will usually provide that model to third parties for review. For example, sending the model to ABS for review because ABS is a class society. Time to wrap it up. See, we all benefit from a basic understanding of the process and applications of FEA. Begin with reasonable expectations for an FEA analysis and monitor with an understanding of the overall process that it may not always be smooth. When you get to that point, FEA gets demystified. It reduces from a dangerous wizard's magic into just another tool in your toolbox. Thanks very much. I'm Nick the Naval Architect. Congratulations! You have joined an elite club, the few and rare that make it to the end of the video. Now, if you'd like to go one step further and join the rarest of the rare, the most elite of all, all you have to do is perform this task. Click like or subscribe and let me know how awesome you are.